Hey there, everyone. It's Barbara Rasgoni, your host of Growing Social Now. Thank you for tuning in today, and I invite you to subscribe wherever you listen to your podcasts. And today, my guest, I'm so excited to say, is Shauna Coronado. So, yeah, great to have you here. <laughs> Shauna and I used to live so close together. I lived in Glen Ellen, and you lived in, was it Winfield, West Chicago? Warrenville. 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 I know it was close. a W. <laughs> And I should get Warrenville because I have a son named Warren and he always thought it was so awesome that there was a town named after him. <laughs> right. But anyway, so now where are you now? I am in Mesa, Arizona. And I have to tell you, I wish I would have done this move 30 years ago. Really? Years ago. Yes. I love the sunshine. Um, mm -hmm. In the winter, it is cold, not compared to Chicago, of course, but I mean, um, you know, we're wearing sweaters and all that. It gets down to the 40s, you know, during the, the early the 40s. mornings. And, and not that. 40 below, just 40s. No, <laughs> no, exactly. And so time has, you know, I hated the eight months of gray and it oh, was depressing for, sure. for me. So depressing. Yeah. So the move has been absolutely incredible. And working, you know, I've been working out of my house, you know, for a century now. So uh, that was not, I can work anywhere. Mm -hmm. and, and having the ability, like even on the extra hot days, I can just open up my window and, you know, spread the curtains over and there's sunshine right there. So wow. I might be inside for a few weeks during the middle of the summer, but I'm also enjoying sunshine all the time. I love that. Makes me so happy. Yeah, it's such a difference. Now, when Sean and I were both in the western suburbs of Chicago, of course, the rain and the gray would hang on forever. And that's, I just got so sick of it. We moved to Charlotte, North Carolina, and it is very sunny here. And one of the things I've always loved about Shauna is her attention to gardens and wellness. You know, I'm, I just joined a garden club here. And one of the questionnaires was what's in your garden? And I said, I'll get to that later. But you know, <laughs> Because I like to see what other people are doing. So why don't you tell us what you're working on and what's really exciting right now for you? I will. I started out, you know, way back when we all began online, you know, like in 2008, yeah. I published my first book and I self-published the very first book. And then I started doing social media in the traditional sense, but with gardening in mind. It was all mm -hmm. about the garden all the time. Right. And, and then in, uh, time passed and I became popular on social media and all of that. And then in 2015, I was diagnosed with severe degenerative osteoarthritis of the spine. And right. I thought it was the end of my life. I mean, I was, I walked hunched over like this, don't touch me, you know, yeah. like tiny yeah. baby steps and. I thought, oh man, it is the end of the world and I am not going to be able to survive this. I was just sobbing. And uh, wow. one day I was walking on, the doctor had given me, uh, he wanted to prescribe pain medication. He called it pain therapy. If you've heard of pain therapy before. Oh, and yeah. I'm like, what's pain therapy? Well, that's opioids. Oh. And I said, no, thank you. I don't want the opi opioids. It was like devastating. And right. he said, well, I want you to walk every day because it helps shake everything into place. You'll start to feel better. And I'm like, well, that's a load of bull, but okay. So mm -hmm. I'm walking on a track in Warrenville crying, like oh. sobbing. I was in so yeah. much pain. People are walking past me going, what the hell woman, you know? And I remembered when I was on the track that I had spoken with a, a nutritionist and that nutritionist a few years ago had told my daughter and I that if everyone would eat an anti-inflammatory food plan, a diet that was mostly anti-inflammatory, we would not have heart disease, diabetes, chronic pain, things like that as predominantly as we do. So I called her from the track. She answered the phone. The, the actual wow. nutritionist answered the phone yeah. and I'm crying. You oh, know, she's like, yeah. okay, honey. What we're doing here is you are going to stop what you're doing. You're co I'll cancel all my appointments today. You're coming in. And this is the first day of the rest of your life. Wow. And I was in such devastating pain that I, I basically said, F you, but I'm desperate. You, mm -hmm. you know what? I, I was so in such a low, bad place. I just couldn't imagine ever getting better. Okay. So she put me on an anti-inflammatory food plan for 30 days only. She's like, this is a 30 day thing. It's mm -hmm. basically an elimination food plan. We're going to get you on it. And then you cannot cheat. 
There's no oh, booze. That's tough, isn't it? Yeah. Oh, no, booze. No, no booze for the next four weeks. There's no cheating for the next four weeks. I'm like, oh yeah. my God. How am I gonna how am I gonna live? You know, what am I gonna do? And it was revelatory. Within four days, my chronic pain went down by about 40%. Four days is very important because okay. it takes on average the average human being about four days to work out food sensitivities and allergens out of their body. Hmm. So let's say you're allergic to chamomile. I'm allergic to chamomile tea. Okay. So I have some tea on Monday and then on Wednesday, I might have a reaction. It takes that long. It can take up to four days to have a reaction. And it absolutely Jeez. takes four days for you to work something out of your system. Huh. So uh, if I eat something now that I, I'm allergic to mushrooms, if I eat some mushrooms, I don't die, but I do clog up. Like all my systems will swell up. My, mm -hmm. my knuckles hurt. My joints hurt. I'm not feeling well after mushrooms. It, I won't feel better for at least four days. So when people tell me that they're going on a diet or a food plan and that food plan, it's cheat Sundays. On Sunday, I cheat. Yeah, I, think, I always wonder about My that. God, <laughs> you are re-inflaming yourself. So yes. you're going to be sick for a half of the week at uh, least before you can recover again. And then you start the cheat day all over again and you're sick again. You know, it's like this horrible cycle. You have to adopt a food plan that is a lifestyle change. If you have something like chronic pain, uh, fibromyalgia, mm -hmm. anything that's considered an inflammatory, con even diabetes, adopting a, a food plan that is healthier for you means that you're going to mm -hmm. reduce your symptoms. They might not all go away, but you're going to reduce and reduce. So now jump ahead. That was 2015. So right. after the first 30 days, I was like, okay. And I have to tell you, this is so funny. I called her every day for the first four days and said, I hate you. This is <laughs> Shawnee. You're so nice. I can't believe you. I know <laughs> I was in the worst pain of my life. I'm like, this oh, is yeah. never going to work. Yeah. I hate this. I hate everything. Um, I'm, a, I'm all hunched over. I'm like, oh my um, God, this is the end yeah, of my yeah. life. You know, I was horrible. Then on day five, I called her and I'm like, I love you. You were <laughs> right. On um, 30 days in, I went into her office. I hugged her and cried like a baby. Oh, wow. I'm like, my God, what yeah. if I'd only known this 20 years ago, I would have, I had all kinds of allergies and my mm -hmm. allergies started going away. Really? Uh, my menopause symptoms went away for about two years, but you can't escape menopause. Yeah. So I'm back at <laughs> menopause again. Can um, run, but, but <laughs> yeah, you can't escape it. But I mean, everything that was inflammatory went away or were, or was reduced significantly. Uh -huh. And I'm like, I, it was like a miracle. Mm. So at the end of 30 days, I said, I don't want to go off the food plan. Mm -hmm. It's like, okay, so now's the time. What we're going to do is we're going to gradually reintroduce foods. Mm -hmm. You went totally bare and I'll tell you what the food plan is. So if you yeah, already tell us. Know, might need it. Yeah. But it's super easy. And, but then I gradually reintroduced things. I found out that butter doesn't really affect me, but all other dairy really bothers me. And I will get all the symptoms. I'll swell up. I won't feel right. Huh. If I have a little bit, I might be okay. But after, you know, having like servings every day, oh, well, you know, I'm just not right. And yeah. so this process of elimination and then mm -hmm. gradually reintroducing, it's like a baby. You reintroduce a new food mm -hmm. once every four days every so that you have that four day yeah. time to, yeah. To yeah. Recover. Okay. So here's what the food plan is. And for the first 30 days, you need to be super faithful to it because this is what's going to teach you what foods you're actually sensitive to and which ones you're not. And okay. there is a difference between food sensitivities and food allergies. You could go in and be tested for food allergies, and it might say that you are not allergic to dairy or cheese or anything like that, but you might eat dairy and cheese and your body still reacts to it. Mm. That's a food sensitivity sensitivity versus a tested allergy. So this is something else to consider. Uh, a lot of people will tell me, well, I did the diet, but I'm not allergic to wheat. So I went ahead and had all the wheat and I'm like, okay, no bread. You need to eliminate that. Okay. So here it is. 
Okay. And it sounds, again, sounds terrifying. Only for 30 days. Okay. You can do it. <laughs> you can do this. It's, you know, going to jail is hard. Having your arm cut off is hard. Yeah. 30 days of a food plan. You got this. I know you got this. Okay. It is grain free. Uh -huh. so no grain. Rice is grain. Oh, Meat yeah. Meat is grain. Corn is grain, not yeah. a vegetable. Okay. Corn syrup is in everything. Oh, it is. Yeah. yeah. No grain, no soy, mm -hmm. no dairy, mm -hmm. no booze, mm -hmm. and no sugars that are not natural. Mm -hmm. And I would say to add to that sugar thing, no juices. If you go read the side of an orange juice package, mm -hmm. like my mother was always, hey, orange juice is good for you. Because I get the the gritty grainy kind, you know, with all the fiber in it. And yeah, all the that. pulp, extra and, pulp, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Look at the sugar content. Yeah, it can be up to 36 that. grams of sugar in a little tiny container, a little like eight ounces of that, orange That's sugar. more than a soda probably. Yes. I mean, it can be super, yeah. super high. Yeah. So, so I stopped the juice, but I kept berries in. Berries are my thing. I, I love, love berries. berries. Yeah, I just had berries with oatmeal this morning yeah, yeah all the berries blackberries blueberries any berry yeah, yeah. and i do i do them all and i've never stopped them and i have you know no reaction to them and i love them a lot so that's my real sugar if you will that I, so in that first 30 days and then people say well if you can't have grain you can't have dairy you can't what the hell what can you have right, right. yeah well a food plate should be you got this big plate you want right. half vegetables uh -huh. half vegetables protein uh -huh. your, your serving of protein which is about right. your fist yeah right? and then what would normally be a grain i mm -hmm. usually add extra vet like i do rice cauliflower so it's like having oh. rice, you know yeah that's so, so good i love that it's delicious. It I mean, is. I, and you roast your vegetables with olive oil oh, and, yeah. you know, herbs and, oh, I mean, I have plenty to eat, believe me, in this food plan. And so that's how I started it with the, you know, the first 30 days. Now I have behind me my little book, which is called Stacked with Flavor. This is one of my most recent books. It's a cookbook. And at the beginning okay. of the book is the food plan. So okay. you can go to my website, shaunacoronado.com. You can order the book. You can see exactly a far more detailed food plan where it's all laid out. And mm -hmm. this is something everyone should do with the supervision of their medical professional. Right. Because I, to be really upfront, I'm not a nutritionist, but I have done the journey. And I know, right. you know, I know what all of this is, but you need to have a food plan that's set for your body. And mm -hmm. it might be a little different than what mine is. So it gives you the general guidelines, this mm -hmm. book, and it'll kick, you know, kickstart you. And then all of the recipes are, there's only like two recipes that actually take cooking, cooking, you know, like, really? <laughs> well, yeah. how do you make food if you don't cook, cook, Shauna? <laughs> yeah. Lots of salads, raw food. Oh, yeah. Uh, if you do, um, you know, you don't have to roast or roast for four hours, that sort of thing. It's yeah. rotisserie chicken hints, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. how you put together a meal really quickly. And then that, this is the plan that I've been on since 2015. I'm still grain free. I occasionally have rice. Uh -huh. I'm still dairy free. I've eaten this. I eat all the flavors and all the foods and I don't feel like I've sacrificed anything. I do drink coffee. Lots of people ask me about caffeine and yes, I do drink ca caffeinated drinks um, partially because I have sacrificed so many other things that I feel like, you know, give me some real uh, naughtiness and let me have some caffeine. Yeah. I drink an occasional martini. Last mm. night I had a great lemon drop made from my own lemon trees. It Ooh. was it was lovely, <laughs> yeah. you know? but um, generally speaking, I keep the sugar low and that is what an anti-inflammatory food plan is. The best anti-inflammatory food plan that has been recommended for over 50 years is the Mediterranean diet. Oh yeah. That includes, so if you want a guideline, go to a Mediterranean diet. 
It mm -hmm. does include dairy, but a small amount, actually, if you look at, you know, what the, mm -hmm. the diet requires and the grains are whole grain. So when you start reintroducing foods, you should be eating whole grains if you're going to reintroduce grain back into your life. So I occasionally, like I said, I have like a whole grain rice or something like that. And, and it's fine. The other thing is portion size. I always ate like, you know, stir fry rice. That was a giant plate full of stir fried rice. Yeah, well, if you go order it, that's what you get. You get like this giant container. You know? Yes. <laughs> and I would, of course, eat it all. Hello. You know. Why not? It's so and, good. And it's delicious. <laughs> And so I would do this and then I, I would be sick. And so I went back to the nutritionist. And by the way, the nutritionist that I went to, is she's still active. She's in Downers Grove. Her name's Deepa. And Deepa, I will send you a link to her if you like. Uh, she's oh, yeah, lovely. Sure. And, but she said to me, it's so funny. She says, how much are you eating? You know, like she asked me, how big is your portion? I'm like, you know, big. And she's like, no, no, no. She's like, That's you it. have to apportion, look at your, the size of your fist yeah. Yeah. Use that as your guesstimate. She's like, no, that's not an exact portion, but it's close enough. If yeah. you're eating more than that, you're overeating and your system is reacting to it. I'm yeah. Like, it's a lot oh. of work for a body. That's what I always think when, you know, like after a big holiday, you know, I'm like, my body is working so hard to make sure that it can digest all this. Yes, <laughs> yes, exactly. And if you work. are having inflammation or some problem, this is not helping you, you know, no, it's, not your at gut all. is like, forget this. I don't like anything. So after I stuck with the food plan for a while, mm -hmm. people would come to visit me here in Arizona. And it's it, the really funny thing is they, we'd fix dinner and they'd be like, oh my God, this took like five minutes. <laughs> uh, like I thought this was going to be hard to be yeah. on your food plan. I'm like, are you kidding? I'm lazy. I don't, mm -hmm. I'm just like you. I have a busy life and mm -hmm. I don't want to spend hours in the kitchen making fancy meals. This is not, mm -hmm. you know, I'm not a chef. I don't pretend to be, this is, you know, everyday living. And I don't want those fancy ingredients. You know how they say, oh, you can have a gluten-free cake. And all it takes is 465 ingredients and four hours of your time. And it's I'm like, a lot. Yeah. No. I was going to the store yeah. and trying to get all that. I mean, sometimes I'll just yes. grab something off the shelf. I love to cook, but if it's going to take all these ingredients and all these trips, it's like, is it really? No one has time. Yeah. So that's what started my, my latest push. Again, if you go to my website, shaunacoronado.com, mm -hmm. at the top, you will see a link to the eight minute method. Mm -hmm. The eight minute method is an online course. It's, it's several hours long. And I teach people how you can cook in eight minutes or less for breakfast, lunch, or dinner ways, cheat ways that you can shorten. And I don't want to fool anyone and say, slow cooking is bad. Slow cooking is good. If yeah. you have the time and the energy to do slow cooking, please do. It is very good for you. Mm -hmm. um, but you know, if you do want to cook something like a roast, crock pot it because when you crock pot something for, by the way it takes eight minutes or less to throw all the baloney oh, inside yeah. the crock pot right it takes right, a quick yeah. minute to do that yeah, yeah once you get it in what you're doing is you're breaking the structure the cellular structure of the meat mm -hmm. or vegetables down so then when you consume it you've already started the digestion process. Yeah. So I have a far, like red meat is a big no for me, unless it's slow cooked like that. Mm -hmm. So part of the eight minute method was also, hey, I can teach people how to cook in eight minutes and I can also mm -hmm. teach them how to load a crock pot. So when they do slow cook, that it's good stuff and good for them and not a bunch of chemicals, but instead is very healthy. And so yeah. then it became eight minute exercise. Because oh. that's the other magical component of all this. I uh, was walking an hour every day. And then I found I really struggled to find that hour, right? How do I find my hour? How do I, do? well, my osteoarthritis, and by the way, there's no cure for spinal osteoarthritis. The anti-inflammatory foods have really helped me tremendously in, in getting the pain to reduce, but there is no cure for it. So it is something I'm stuck with for life, right? So occasionally I have a flare or occasionally <clears throat> I have problems and I had to go to a physical therapist because all the way down by my booty, 
at the very bottom of where my tailbone is, I was having pain and we couldn't, it wouldn't go away with my diet. And I'm like, what is going on? Turns out that I have to do strengthening exercises for my core and my behind and all of that so that uh, I can stay strong and keep my spine in good shape. So exercise. I couldn't fit my hour. I just struggled to do it every morning. And then I started doing the eight minute method with my exercising where mm -hmm. I take a break several times a day. I'll do push ups, sit ups, calisthenics. I go to take a walk. You know, I walk around my block eight minutes and I do these really short spurts of exercise. And what inspired me to include that in the eight minute method is my physical therapist who said, you know, you don't have to do this all at once. Right. Like, yes. Oh, yeah. You know? yeah. Like, are you kidding? I can spread it out. She's like, you can mm -hmm. do this whenever. She just do a little bit at a time is better than doing nothing at mm -hmm. all, which were couch potatoes doing nothing at all. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. food plan plus an exercise plan. Mm -hmm. When people say, well, seriously, I still can't seem to schedule it in my day. And I'm like, well, then you need to know how to schedule. And I will teach you that. So at the beginning of the course, I teach people how to effectively use their calendar in order to schedule their day, their business mm -hmm. needs, all of that. And then I put it all online, which is ultimately what we're talking about here, right? Is, you know, how do we connect via social media mm -hmm. uh, from a marketing perspective? How do we market this? Uh, I use a tool online to build my courses called Kajabi. And Kajabi is, uh, the reason I went to Kajabi for my newsletter and my other business online is because it's all inclusive. I can do everything right there. And it helps you with, you know, if you have an email sequence, you need mm -hmm. to, to complete and all that. And so uh, my best advice to people when it comes to how do you market, you know, you have something that's the eight minute method or something that's very, uh, it has a catch. It's something different. Well, having a website is not enough, as you know. Right. Having social yeah. media is important, but mm -hmm. uh, what is the most effective social media for you? You know, I would love to. I'm, I've been looking into TikTok, but truthfully, my audience—I know my audience very well. It's really me. It's between the ages of 30 to 65. Okay. So it's an older audience. I know that. Okay. And where do you find them? You find them on Facebook and Instagram. And, yep. you know, I have a Twitter, but it, it gets very little traffic because mm -hmm. that's not, my audience is not there looking for me there. They're, they're on Facebook and they're on Instagram. Mm -hmm. And so that's, so once you understand where your marketing potential is, then that's where you go. So the, the first time that I launched the eight minute method, I only launched, I did not run advertisements and fancy pants extended, you know, I didn't spend a lot of money advertising. Mm -hmm. I just focused on my audience and said, here's the course, here's what it is. The prices are going up in the future. If you want to grab in, grab in now. And uh, I tripled what I expected to sell the first time. Uh, wow. still not where I want to be, but this yeah. is important because it was a trial and I was quite successful with that. So now what I've been doing over the last six months is really rebuilding the website. You and I started out at the same time. I had a blog and a website, like, you know, way back when. And uh, the thing is, is people don't realize that their website really gets old. And oh, it Google, does. Yeah, so Google pays so attention to that. Yeah, so yeah. it's important for you to update your content regularly. Uh, my tool of choice for SEO is Yoast SEO Pro. Yeah, I have and, that too. Yeah, I really love, oh my God. You know, I thought I knew SEO mm -hmm. and then I went and when I signed up for Pro, I got access to all their free courses and mm -hmm. I watched every single course, like every single, I taught me exactly how to put it on WordPress, exactly what to do. And I followed all the rules and I, and I'm like, Oh my God, I knew nothing. I mean, I really, it, they kicked me in my pants. And so I, that was the beginning of me completely rebuilding the back end of my WordPress mm -hmm. and, you know, okay. updating everything, clearing out a lot of the problems, 
and then start gradually starting to update the blog posts themselves. Mm -hmm. And so at the time when I first started doing this, I'm like, oh my God, this is so much effort. And, you know, I'm a one man shop, <laughs> you know, one woman in the shop. Oh my God. And then what happened just yesterday, I went out and noticed that the, the posts that are getting the most traffic are the posts that I've updated. Really? So tell us a little bit about how you updated each one of those posts. Did you go in and do SEO? Did you rewrite them? New intro, new photo? I, What'd you do? I did. What the, my biggest fault was my posts were too short compared to Google's current requirement, which is they really almost, they want it to be a real communication. Mm -hmm. You know, they want it to be not just a story, but they're trying to promote people who are connecting with other people. Mm -hmm. They want that real connection. So writing a post that is only centered for Google and, and, and that's not quite it. And too short and only centered for a, a short story. No, that's not it. You mm -hmm. have to marry the two conceptual ideas and really connect with people. So I started doing how to's, you know, so really answering a person's how to do something, be it garden or food. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, there's nothing worse than getting to a recipe, uh, you know, going online, searching, finding a recipe. Yeah, it's 1,200 words, but it's like, when I was in South Korea in 1940, and I'm like, oh long. my God, I just want the freaking just, recipe, you know. Yeah. So it's finding a way to bring the important stuff to the mm -hmm. top and then still continue the story and have full photos involved so that you have this marriage of you have the eyeball connection with good photos and then you also have a how-to that gets google excited and mm -hmm. so then you know so it became my mission then to update to increase the length of the blog post if it makes sense to include affiliate sales links so mm -hmm. I have many affiliate partners, different. I, I don't just use one affiliate thing. I'm also uh, an affiliate with uh, Amazon, you know, so I have Amazon. I have all kinds of different partners for specific products that I might promote and I put them in the page. I also make sure that I keep my blog posts that I'm linking to on my own website because it, Yoast will say, hey, you didn't link to shaunacoronado.com. I need to links. do that. Yeah. yeah. Have an internal so I'm like, link, okay, well, yeah. exactly. So let's yeah. link to this story about tomatoes because I'm talking about a tomato salad. Mm -hmm. And then I realized that the story about tomatoes really sucks, is too short and doesn't have proper SEO. And I'm like, all right, I'm going to now I'm gonna have to fix this blog. Oh, you know, yeah. One thing leads to yeah. another, to another. And so it's about, you should be writing on some level for Google when you're talking about a blog post, honestly, right. then all of the people who are making hand over fist online will tell you that because if Google doesn't find you, no one will find you. So that's very, very important. Mm -hmm. Then the next level of this is that you need to have content that is really worthy of someone reading. Uh, for me, it's all focused on the how-to, whether it's a how-to recipe or how to do a garden or how to live with chronic pain. It's all a how-to. And then people are seeking me out because they're looking for answers for themselves. You know, it's a- Right, and what do you form. type into the search box? How-to, so. Uh, yeah, exactly. That's exactly what you do. And then uh, the keywords I focus- you know, some people do a lot of keyword research. Mm -hmm. I'm very bad about keyword research. I just pick what the topic of the blog post is and typically use that as my keyword and hope for the best. So there has to be a point them. when, you know, <laughs> if you're a one person shop, it becomes very difficult to do it all. And I was trying to do it all and for years feeling incredibly frustrated. Like I avoided repairing my website because mm -hmm. I'm like, oh, it's too hard. I can't do it. So I procrastinated or procrastigardened or in my, or the famous <laughs> procrastacleaned, you know, for months. <laughs> trying to to procrastinate. Yeah. I procrastinate. My husband would call me if he was off working and say, well, you know what you're doing? I'm like, ah, procrastinating. Uh, once again, it's so easy to put it off though, because it seems like it's overwhelming. And I don't know about you. I have like, I think 1200 blog posts. So I probably focus on my top I don't know, start with maybe even the top 10, but 
Um, so that's, that's one thing I know you've done. And you've also, I wondered how your videos are doing, because I know, gosh, I'm going to say it was maybe you were one of the first people who really went into video. Maybe it was yes. 10 years ago, maybe more than that. So yes. are those working with you too? Do you go yes. in and update your YouTube or how do yes, you Yes, you that? have to, but I have to tell you, um, my YouTube is ready for the same thing I did to my website. Okay. It's, yeah, it, needs, <laughs> it needs the yeah, renovation. Uh, yeah. But this is because, you know, the same reason we must keep up with it. Well, I can only do one thing at a time. So I decided to focus primarily on the website because that's a base. I've written nine books, right? So the, you can go there and you can find my books. You can find my favorite products. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, what's making you money would be my question. If somebody's saying, okay, what do I prioritize? What do I do first? Well, what is it? I have a great question, Sean. Yes. And you money and most people are like, money. I think TikTok sounds good. It's like, no, that's not the right answer. <laughs> yeah. What is it? The answer is what is making you money? And then I had a yeah. friend of mine who's quite successful online. Mm -hmm. He's like a genius. And, and he told me, he's like, okay, what's making you money? And I'm like, well, I have a little Google ads here and a little Google ads there and, and this and that. And he's like, okay, whatever's making you money, I want you to go to it and do everything to make more money because you know that That's what's funny. making you money is successful so now expand on that do more yeah. and i'm like oh oh you're kidding me That's it's so, it's so, so straightforward simple. but it's so it's just so hard to see unless yes because i'm so you're so your mind is blown you're so overwhelmed you have this <laughs> giant you know i have 1200 blog posts about yeah, you know, yeah i have yeah. all this i'm like my god and i became completely overwhelmed and didn't know what to do this is the answer. So I started when I first started how, which blog posts do I renovate first? Mm -hmm. You know, there's some that are just horrible. And I, you know, what do I do? Well, the answer became that man's advice. I went to the blog posts that were making, getting the min, most hits. Most and then I fixed them first and expanded okay. on them even more. And so now before they didn't have affiliate sales on them even, mm -hmm. you know, so now when people go there, they can click and they can get seeds or plants or whatever it is that they were looking for or uh, uh, cooking tools, you know, whatever it is, you can get it on my web. And then the, some of the affili affiliates, some are work this way and some don't, but Amazon works that if one person clicks through on Amazon, if they don't order that product, they're linked to you for the rest of the day. So if they order other products, you still get the benefit of that if they followed your link initially. And so that's magic because I had a bunch of meat ordered. <laughs> but Lana, like meat, I didn't sell meat. And then a girlfriend of mine said, yeah, you don't know what, how Amazon affiliates really works. And that's the final issue. How are you supposed to know mm -hmm. all these complicated programs and everything? You can't. I mean, I don't see how, uh, you know, not everyone is a genius at uh, doing this. And yet you can still be successful when you get the basics in. You have a decent website that is SEO'd very well and searchable by Google. And then you start adding affiliate sales and things like that. And gradually the money comes. And that's the important point. Lots of people think that they're going to create a website and then become instantly rich. Still to this day, they think this. I, it's, it's so shocking to me that people, and people call me up and they're all like, kinds of "Courses on that too." Yeah, they're like, "You're a millionaire, right?" I'm like, yeah. "No," because yeah. it's a slow burn. It's it a is classic marketing. Classic marketing. It's mm -hmm. a slow burn, and you know the old-fashioned saying that a person has to see you seven times. The rule of seven for marketing rule of seven has to see you seven times before they decide to purchase. Well, mm -hmm. they see me on Instagram, they see me on Facebook, then they see me promote several times on the product, then they might go to my website and sign up for my newsletter, then they're getting information via email dropped into their, you know, so then by then they've seen me more than seven times. And when I go to promote an online course, they're ready to make a purchase. Mm -hmm. That's because I've committed to them, right? I've committed to our friendship, I've committed to help them. And um, this is my business. But the funny thing for me is it's also my life. You know, like I talk, you know, lots of influencers are living the life that they're talking about and are genuine about it. And that's exactly what 
you know, I am living this life. This is who I am and how I live. And because of that, that credibility factor then will help bring more people to your website and mm-hmm. to my website, uh, it being genuine and really who you are. Yeah. And I, I feel like you have to walk the talk. I mean, if this is what you said you did, and then you were just out eating ice cream every night, and it would be really hard to mm-hmm. promote a lifestyle that you can't be true to. So I really honor you and admire you for that. And you've always oh, been with Shauna though. I mean, when you were out in the garden, you were always into it, your wall gardens, all that stuff you did. I mean, it's always been a part of your being. And I think that's what attracts people to you. Oh, thank you. I really, really enjoy my life too, where I'm not a millionaire. I'm not making billions of dollars here. Um, but you know, I am making a full-time living out of this and I enjoy what I do and just enjoying life means there's an added benefit here is that helping people helps you to enjoy life. And in fact, I just posted this on my Facebook business page yesterday, I believe, um, helping other people. It's been scientifically proven that helping other people is a great way for you to stay mentally healthy yourself because Mm. it is an added emotional boost. It does a lot to help community. And it sounds almost, if you remember the friends show where Phoebe, they argued with Phoebe and told Phoebe, Hey, being nice is selfish because it makes you feel good. And so you're being selfish. You're not being nice for real. You're Mm -hmm. being selfish because Mm -hmm. you want to feel good. And so then every time she was nice, she was like, Oh, I was not, oh, that felt good. And this is it. <laughs> yeah. That being nice, helping others, doing mm-hmm. kind things is a great way to live your life, but also a great way to run a business. Oh, that's so true. And that's a great note to end on. So if, if people want to find you, they should go to shaunacoronado.com. And is that, and what platform should they look for you on? Oh, Facebook for sure. And you can just, there are no other Shauna Coronados. I'll be out on Facebook. You. I'm on Instagram and I hope to see you soon. Please join my newsletter. Well, well, that's great. And I hope everyone does. And the last thing I ask on my show is what is your word of the day? So what word would you like to share with our listeners? Oh, I'm going to share the word gratitude. Oh. Every day mm-hmm. I pick one thing that I'm grateful for in the morning before I start my work. And I think about it for a minute. Today, it was my husband, which Mm -hmm. not that I never am grateful for him, but I am today, I'm really grateful for him. And yesterday it was almond butter. So, you know, (laughs) (laughs) whatever you're grateful for. (laughs) I love it. Okay, well, Shauna, thank you for joining us. Everyone go look Shauna up online and subscribe to her newsletter. Thank you for listening to Growing Social Now. I am your host, and I invite you to subscribe to this podcast for more great episodes like this one.